What's up, everybody? It's Carmelo Anthony, and you're watching JR Sports Brief. It's JR, you're checking out the Sport Brief, and Sport Brief meets Sports Nation. There it is. What, what happened, Marcellus? I, I replaced Max. Why, why am I here right now? <laughs> you know what? That's a moving chair right there. You know, we've seen a few people in that seat. Right. But at the same time, man, it's just good to be here and excited for the show. Uh, we've taken a few turns over right. the years right. and uh, the opportunities that are in front of us, uh, we're all excited about. Now, listen, man, you generally sit with Max mm. in the radio studio. Oh, too and long. And you guys too have long. been in this studio for a little while now. What has yeah. is, is the adjustment been like? Uh, the first adjustment is to your personal life. The, the fact that you're going to see one person who you work with more than you see anybody in your real life, in your personal life. More than my girl. I see this dude every single day for like 10, 12 hours. Right. But with that said, man, you can really establish great chemistry. Uh, we've, we've come to a place where we really understand each other. Uh, we understand our, our different tones, our biorhythms, how we're feeling. I know when right. he's up, when he's not so up, vice versa. Um, it's just a great chemistry that's being formed right now because we have these kindred spirits underneath layers of like polarity. Like mm -hmm. he looks different to me. I'm a little midget little dude. Sorry, hey, hey, sorry, hey, sorry, hey, sorry, hey, sorry. Hey, hey, hey. First of all, wait, wait, let's stop this. Max is not a midget, and neither am I. Now, now continue. Little sense. people, all right, he's, he's vertically challenged. You know, you know something about that. And, um, you know, me and just our backgrounds, it's so crazy playing football, him being a student. We intersect at Columbia. Right. And then we go off. He goes straight New to York. ESPN. Yes, respect. Yep, 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 yep. And then I go to the football field, and we end up doing the same thing and um, having a tremendous time on the radio and now on TV. That's cool. So you guys are not tired of each other yet? No, nah, you know, I, I played football my entire life, so I'm used to just a, a locker room full right, of guys, different right. cast of characters, knowing which guys, you know, have a little attitude issue. Some guys are fun loving, some guys, you know, are quiet and, and standoffish. So I can deal with all types of personalities. Thankfully, I was groomed for this position, but uh, I don't think I'll get tired of him, man. I know when to tune him out. I know when okay. he's talking too much, which is a lot, but you know, most of the time, you know, we get it good. This sounds like a friend of mine's mother. Not my mama, hi mommy. <laughs> I love my mother, but right. like somebody else's mother. But it's Fan Friday. It's all about everybody who's out there watching. There Twitter, is. Facebook, all that good stuff. And we got a question in. All uh, right. It's ESPY's week. We, we, we know, I know you were there. I was there as well, talking to a million trillion people. Yeah. And it seemed that LeBron James got a lot of attention. So the first question for Fan Friday comes in via Aman Khan on Twitter. Twitter. Uh, should LeBron have won Athlete of the Year? It seemed like everybody I asked on the red carpet about whether or not uh, it was an inspirational athlete or a top athlete of the year. It seemed like 90% of people just said LeBron. Yeah. Like, like Gabby Douglas's and, and, and Kaepernick's were just like out there. Do you think LeBron takes too much shine away from other folks? I don't think so. Um, you, first of all, let's talk about the role to success for LeBron James. No one at the age of 16 has ever been as highly touted, had the demands and expectations placed on them like LeBron James. Cover of Sports Illustrated, games on ESPN. And guess what? He has lived up to those expectations. Sure. We've and heard. Maybe exceeded. And maybe exceeded them. We've yeah, always yeah. heard of the guy on our block or the guy that we were like, man, he's the next. How many times we've said next? Oh, money cook. <laughs> <laughs> and the next doesn't pan out. So right. just in that lane alone, you got to give him respect. Mm -hmm. But then every athlete, I think we felt our heart tugged when we saw the criticism towards him for the decision mm. and the pep rally. And every mm. athlete was sitting there like, wow, I would have done the same thing. And look at the, all of the criticism and adversity he's faced because of that unfairly. Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden, he becomes a sympathetic figure and everyone's rooting for him. So I just think now that you're starting to see everyone starting to give him his proper respect for how great he is. Okay, so he's not getting too much attention. No. Proper respect. Proper respect, man. That man's a beast on the court and a tremendous guy off the court. Right, he's a nice guy. Yeah, I, yeah. Can't, I can't front. See what I'm saying? I can't, I mean. A super duper star, like I next level lie. guy, he's global nice icon, he's and nice still guy. that down to earth. He's cool. a nice guy. Some, I mean, sometimes even I say some stuff and go, hey, you know, I didn't particularly like that, but I can't front. LeBron is a cool dude. Last question for Fan Friday comes in via Colton White. What was your favorite part of the ESPYs? Oh, wow. The favorite part of the ESPYs was, you know what, there were two moments. I, I guess all of the highs, the laughter, you know, some of the skits. You know, John Hamm did a tremendous job he to me. He killed Dwight Howard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he spoke to Dwight. <laughs> yeah, I love that, but 
the tear jerking moments, the oh, moments. That, yeah, the moments where, where my fiance had to actually, you know, get some tissue to her eye. And I felt it too, the emotions, because like you said, mm -hmm. uh, Robin Roberts and her story. And then a little seven year old kid, man, oh, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, see yeah. him running for Nebraska football, uh, having brain cancer mm -hmm. is just tremendous because that's what sports is about showing people overcoming adversity. You know, a lot of people from different places coming together as one team with one goal. Mm -hmm. And I think that they captured that spirit you know, One thing about that little kid, he's inspirational for another fact. Uh, he has more heart running than Chris Johnson. Hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not taking I'm, that. I'm, 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 How you gonna go there on Chris? How you gonna go there on two I'm, G's like I'm that? just saying. Two G's, four, I, four, two. How you gonna go on my man like that? I, you don't blame the offensive line? Name him. Talk about their game. Exactly. Exactly. You can't okay. Name them. All right. All right. There yeah. it is. Well, we can. We I blame can. the hogs that he don't have. He ain't got no hogs up front. I, I would. Oh, you him. gonna go there? No, no. I'd give him a little bit, and then there's other stuff that I'm gonna leave for, oh, for oh, off camera oh, about oh, Chris. Oh, okay. uh, things I've seen, and, and uh, but yeah. that's besides that. <laughs> it's Jr. Sport Brief meets Sports Nation. There yeah. it is. I'm here with my main man, Marcellus. Don't worry, Max is just keeping the seat warm for a few seconds. Tell them where they can find you, Marcellus. Oh my God, I'm here. <laughs> I'm on ESPN Sports Nation. Also, Max and Marcellus doing the radio. And if you don't see us there, probably at the club nearest you. You can find them in the club. This Hydrate. Is Hyd yeah, with Agua. Agua. You said it. Agua. This is JR. You're checking out the Sport Brief here on Sports Nation. Big Sports Nation. And we are out. Have a great Friday, people. Enjoy the weekend. Peace. I like his voice. Can I, can I borrow that? You want to borrow my voice? Yeah.